Yo, 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 Michael T. Porter here. Welcome to the Rooted in Music TV podcast. Oh, man, we have a great show. We have a great show. We have a great episode. Before I begin, y'all hit that like button, subscribe button, that share button, hit that notification bell so you know when I am dropping. If you'd like to support your independent artist, cash app, dollar sign, Michael U.S., hit your boy up. Also, check out my Spotify podcast, the 250 Gemstones Culture podcast. That link is in the description. Oh, we're going to have some fun today. Oh, got to have some fun today. Lil Boosie and his family is screwed up. But we're going to talk about the bigger picture between the relationships between parents and children. This society thrives on broken homes. It's very profitable. It's good for entertainment. It's good for prisons. It's good for welfare. It's good for political reasons. They always be able to control you because strong households typically mean um, dual income, which means the parents can provide a better life for the children. But this is very unique because even in these circumstances, rare circumstances, will it's not so rare anymore. Even when the parents have the means, have that good to like Boosie, even when the parents have that guap, their kids still turn out to be absolutely terrible. Let's dive into this. This is one of his daughters, uh, Tori. And we ain't bashing. They put it out there. These these folks put it out there. She talking to this man like that's her boyfriend. That's nigga. F that nigga. That is not your boyfriend. That is not your husband. That is not your sibling. That is not your homeboy. That's your damn daddy. Look, look at how this heifer talked to her daddy who just bought her. Who, she got mad because he took away her $80,000 bins. I want y'all look at this ghetto mess. Look at she talked. She talked to that's her, like her that's her her fiance or her her husband or her, or her brother. I don't want to talk about this, man. It's, it's... Look at look at this half a talk. Ain't my daddy a bitch, her bitch, not in my blood, never been. Any child with with who disrespect their father like that, they ain't got nothing good coming to them. I don't want to talk about that, man. It's it's over with. I said what I said. I told no lies. A child with a mouth like that would never, uh, never get a blessing. That... <sighs> to a daddy who been here the whole way, I ain't talking Ooh. about no the whole way. The whole way, you'll never, you'll, you'll never have no good luck. That shows the character of a mother. How could a mother let a child talk like that to a father? That shows the character of a mother. That's the same woman, bro. Oh, so she get it from her mom. That's why she's talking to this dude like that's her boyfriend, like or that's her husband. Because her mama be talking to Boosie all crazy. But Boosie like them ghetto-ass women. He loved them ghetto-ass women. Let me see. Oh man, I had all these tabs up. What happened to all my tabs? No, it was, uh, here we go. This was. Here we go. I heard the video. Hold on. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. It was on Hip Hop DX. Nine Mag is pretty lenient. But I'm trying to get hit. I know I won't get hit with Hip Hop DX. Oh, man. Look at this. You're no longer my father. Boosie daughter goes off. That's wild. I guess we can go with this. They mother respect. You know, most kids who respectful, they mother respect. That's just life. Hey, 
this. Oh. I don't want to talk about that child. My other daughters are very respectful. You got to look at their mamas, bro. My other daughters are very respectful. My mama used to tell me that, man. My mama used to tell me that, and I ain't. My mama used to ask who her mom is. When I was coming up, I was dating her. My mama like, who her mom is? Oh, she a hoe. Oh, what? Oh, she ain't shit. It's baby mama. I ain't mama. see till I, till she was a hoe. You know, like. My mom used to always tell me that. I ain't gonna lie, I can't. She used to say that shit. Lucy married a hoe. Oh man, that my mom used to say this shit, bro. I swear to God. To be like, who her mom is? Oh, she a hoe. Who her mom is? Can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Oh, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't nothing right there. See, Boosie messed up always tell me. because he didn't listen to his mama. Boosie didn't listen to his mama when his mama said who her mama is. Boosie's baby mama's mama is a hoe, so her daughter, so Boosie's baby mama more than likely is going to be a hoe. And now his daughter acting like has that same messed up ass ignorant mentality. We got to be careful who we sleep with. Got to be careful who we sleep with. Let me see what else he's talking about. Oh, he's going to tour the house, but I'm going to show y'all this. I'm going to show you how messed up the family is. This is other daughter, Poison Ivy. She's gay. And Lil Boosie, they want him, they want his daughter to contaminate his others, contaminate his other children with her gayness. Because I don't want it to contaminate her other. It's, it's a generation we raised. I don't want her to get too contaminated to her, her other six, seven sisters who look up to her. I want them to bring me grandchildren the right way. If I want grandchildren the right way, that's what I'm going to stand on. You know, if I don't want my other little girl to look at that and say, what's that, daddy? To somebody she looks up to, it's not going to come around. My grandfather didn't let it. My daddy didn't let it, and I didn't let it. I just hope the one under me, when they take this throne, they don't let it, because that's not what our family believes. Like you say, we Southern Baptists. You know, I love my, me and my yep. daughter relationship. Like so notice how everybody in the audience, get black people have, not all, but a lot of black people have given themselves to Satan. You know, there's a lot of perversion in the world. There's a lot of lust in the world. We all fall victim. Most of us fall victim to it. But you, once you clearly understand, you have to understand what lust and perversion will lead you to, will lead you to doing things that you wouldn't normally do. He said he didn't want this energy, this mentality, this lifestyle to be around his other children, especially his other daughters who look up to her because Poison Ivy, you know, I guess she's like the... Uh, the more outgoing of the bunch. And usually when you're outgoing, people gravitate towards you. So he doesn't want his other children gravitating towards this lifestyle or thinking this lifestyle is cool because he's trying to build a legacy. You can't build a legacy when your son is dating another man. You can't build a legacy when your daughter is dating another woman, right? So listen how the audience, I believe this audience is mostly black folk. Black folk praise the LGBTQ lifestyle in the name of Jesus. Contaminated. So just like when they say, oh, you're being uh, homophobic towards, you know, the LGBTQ, are you being heterophobic because of our perspectives and lifestyle? They saying that the word heterophobic doesn't exist. These people are allowed to make up words, make up definitions rearrange definitions, alter definitions, alter words, but other people are not allowed to do so or uphold what the traditional word uh, 
the traditional meaning of the word means. We're not allowed to uphold it. A boy can't be a girl. A girl can't be a boy. He doesn't want this energy. This There's more stuff to it than just her being with a girl. It's you in, introducing a lifestyle and mentality in uh, this black folk like for this. you. But when she understands everything, she know daddy don't go, she know. But that's what she chooses to do. But she know we don't go, we, we, we don't go for that. I'm like Whitney Houston mom. That shit gonna stay over there. <laughs> Contaminated. Contaminated. That's what Lil Boosie said. He doesn't want his daughter poison ivy to contaminate contaminate the other children in this household shout out to boosie shout out to boosie shout out to boosie for standing up for what is right because before i get to the whole before we get to the whole crux of what's going on here, the family messed up his 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 little daughter. I guess she's gonna be a hoe. She's I don't see so much a hoe. She talks to her dad. She has the same and there's a lot of bad energy in his house. There's a lot of demonic energy in his house. There's a lack of respect in his house. There's a lack of love in his house, and all that money didn't change it. That's one of the points I'm making. He's very successful in his daughters, his baby girls. One is gay. She believes she acts like a boy. She has a mindset of a boy. He messed up there. She's messed up. You have another one who thinks she's grown and talk to little Boosie like he's a nigga off the street. You know, there's a lack of respect. There's a lack of love. And I commend Boosie for pushing back on the LGBTQ because I don't I don't have any kids. But I don't want my daughter to think that oh, I don't want my daughter to be protected by a woman. I, I don't because what's next? Because one of y'all have to be a man. This is why in most gay couples there's one acting like a boy and one acting like a girl it's it's twisted right you neither one of y'all are men right now what if she's just a feminine my daughter's feminine and she likes other girls okay she, she's just a lesbian and that's just a lesbian and but but something will have to say well why don't you like men you're programmed to like men i want my daughter to be with a man somebody successful somebody that's strong somebody that's headstrong somebody that's uh believing in god somebody's going to protect my daughter i don't feel comfortable with a woman uh having the obligation to protect my daughter she's weaker of the species i don't want the weaker of the species protecting the weaker of the species my daughter's pretty much i'm looking at like my daughter's still alone because a woman can't protect her right in the in the same manner or the same way a man would protect her and guide her and mold her right um it's something special that's divine within men that we have to pour onto our daughters, that we have to pour onto our women. And no matter how much they rebel, no matter if they're trying to be gay, a lot of this is what I'm saying. 97% of women who are bisexual, gay, well, 97% of women that are studs, lesbians, fams, whatever you want to call it, they still trying to get their backs, still trying to get their backs blown out by men. Yeah, I know this from firsthand experience. Many lesbians, are actually bisexual and many bisexuals are actually straight they just like to play with girls titties from time to time they just like to play with them titties from time to time but at the end of the day a lot of girls will be like yeah i'll sleep with a lot of girls but i don't want to be in a relationship with a girl because i need a man because they you know why because they're programmed to follow the stronger of the species so if my daughter comes around talking about i want to follow the weaker of the species i'm like there's something wrong no matter how much say my daughter is the feminine one and she bring home a stud and everybody know in 2024 everybody freaky studs are giving up some jaw studs are getting their backs blown out right because it's in their nature to be dominated i don't give a damn how many tattoos how much the stud sag her pants i don't, I don't give a damn how much tape she tape her titties she's trying to tape them up she has a desire deep 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 most i ain't saying all but 90 percent of studs Nah, it's not that hot for studs. I want to say, nah, I don't know. 2024 is hot. I say 60% of studs will sleep with a man. And right now, going into 2025, look like that number is going to increase because women are finally seeing what it's like to deal with a woman. They can't handle it. You know, 
men can't handle it unless they have a spiritual uh revelation with god and understand these creatures are chaotic they're emotional they're weak they are your servants and if you don't treat them like you know, if you don't treat them like sexual property if you don't treat them like your servant like uh yeah they are your servant if you don't treat them like they're the weaker of the species if you don't kiss on them and love on them and spoil them and cater to them and protect them and buy them gifts and and make sure the finances are straight they won't respect you all these things i'm listing if you don't do these uh top things they're going to forever uh be in darkness because they're designed to keep it simple women want two d's dingling and diamonds that's it dingling and diamond and dingling and diamonds these are the basics and then all the other stuff i'm talking about the guidance and love and uh dominance if you don't dominate them they won't respect you don't fall for this open up to me and be more sensitive and do all no 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 now i'm not saying all the time sometimes we have to be i ain't say being emotional as a man especially with our daughters with our wives we have to just be the shoulder sometimes we ain't got to re uh, respond you gotta be be in your damn feelings just listen to what they have to say just listen to them and coddle them and kiss on them when they when they come to you with their problems kiss on them when they come to you with their problems give them a detailed explanation they love to hear a man's voice that's why our voice are heavier that's why our voice carries further than women that's why we're hairier that's why we're muscular treat them at you need to all men treat them like they're the weaker of the species because they are and they'll love you forever and their compliance will ward them with your masculinity you bring them to god you know you bring them out of that hell that they're in and i'm talking about spiritual gifts you know uh your gifts of you like i said your masculinity your gift your mental gifts you know you're guiding them with your mind you get your you reward them by you're always planning as a man what's the next step for the family what's the next step for myself what's the next step uh in our relationship and she can have some input too but you got to lead her to the promise land first you should be leading her to god then leading her to a home and then leading her into uh the woman that you see her becoming because now you have the eyes of god once you have the eyes of god and you have the heart of god you need to pour that into the daughters, pour that into your wives, pour that into your nieces, pour that into your female co-workers. If they're, you know, following the parameters, because, you know, niggas getting locked up with the essay all around. Just be careful, especially in the workplace. But out in the world, you know, meet, meet some lady at the bar, you meet some lady at the grocery store. Let her know that she's the weaker of the species and it's OK because there's still good men out there that love them love women as a whole and then we love our immediate women in our lives right so always be dominant with women always 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 be dominant with women they're the weaker of the species once again they are sexual property treat them as such well what's all what's all that mean well i'm not saying your daughters i'm talking about your wives i'm talking about your wives your girlfriend men who have your wives and your girlfriends treat your wife like sexual property and she loves that because that's who they are lipstick mascara boobs ass thighs legs toes getting their nails done jewelry everything about a woman is sexy skirts dresses heels sandals everything all of that is for the men well they compete with each other but all of that is to entice a man with their beauty they're more of the beautiful creatures they are very very beautiful they're soft and delicate right but if you don't treat them like sexual property, like you all up on them, like you want to press up on them, that makes a woman feel good. I'm trying to, I'm telling y'all some good stuff. They're sexual property. They're your servant. If you paying your bills, you're doing what you need to do as a man, you're molding her, you're guiding her, you're pouring God's love into her. She needs to be working for you. She needs to be getting her behind up and making sure the house is taken care of. She needs to be with you on meetings. She needs to be making sure that you're taken care of first. She is your servant. Well, she's your servant second. Her first servant is God, and then you, her second servant, and vice versa. My first servant is God, and then her second servant is my second servant is her. So I serve God first, then I serve her. She served God first, then she served me. It's a triangle. But until we get to that triangle, not everybody has that understanding. 
She is your servant. Treat her as such. She's sexual property. She is your servant. She's weaker to species and pour your masculinity and your love and your guidance on her. So saying all that to say this, if that's what I say, now that I broke it down, what men have to offer to women, how could little Boosie be excited that she his daughter is giving um her mind and her spirit, her life to another woman who's she's weak as she's just as weak as my as his uh she's just as weak as his his daughter. Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy has a girlfriend. They're both weak. He's looking at it. My daughter need a man, right? <laughs> and notice how in the clip, once again, um, they said contaminated. Everybody's in there. I thought, I thought it was funny. He said contaminated. I don't, I don't want to get shit. He said his grandmom and them say, you stay there over there. That, that stays over there. That's going to go over there, right? So now Boosie is to blame. The women that he's choosing, there's no love in that house. Like I said, there's no respect in his house, but Boosie has done some things that's questionable. Now, it was brought to my attention from the music lovers. Shout out all the music lovers from country to jazz to rap to rock and roll, R&B, heavy metal, all the guitar players, all the pianists, all the violinists. All the vocalists like myself, all the songwriters, all everybody that contribute to, mu uh, to music, videographers, everybody, music engineers, because y'all brought this to my attention. I didn't know that Boosie hired a 20-year-old woman to sleep with his sons and nephews when they were only 12 and 13. So let's bring this up. So I'm just not the, I'm just not the nigga talking. I'm not just a nigga talking. I'm bringing y'all the facts. Let's see. Uh... Here we go. His hip hop DX. If it's lag, I'm sorry, but we gotta we gotta push on through. My internet's working good. I don't know why, but bear with me. So this just happened. Look, so Boosie Badass has sparked controversy once again. And in this latest incident, the Baton Rouge Red Rapper has elicited outrage for bragging about getting a grown woman to perform oral sex on his underage son and nephews. Ain't finna get my son no more out here. I'm training them boys right. I'm training them boys right. Ask any of my, 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 my nephew. Ask any of them. Ask my son. Yeah. They were 12, 13. They got hit. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. But yeah, I got my son fixed up. You right. <coughs> yes, a grown woman. Grown, super grown. He's at super grown. Super grown. Check the hands out. Checked all my nephews out. Super grown. Is she grown? She checked me out. <laughs> That's not I know what the she did to them. She checked me out that I'm getting them prepared, man. Boosie's comments aren't the first time he publicly discussed getting oral sex for an underage child. In 2017, he came under fire for a similar statement around the time of his son's birthday. Pop, see you tomorrow. Got a bag for you and a bad to give you some head, he wrote on Instagram. Boosie later denied providing his son with the lewd gift and downplayed the post as nothing more than a joke. I was just clowning on Instagram, he told TMZ. I ain't gonna get him no head. I ain't gonna bring nobody. I'm gonna get him no head. But if you want to get some head from a girl, he's 14 years old. I'm cool with it. He added at 14 so you know and it's popular at 14 15 years old that's when they be in heat you know but i'm not gonna just bring a girl to give him head you know but but well he got hit. boosie's latest remarks makes it easy to cast doubt on his past explanation once again putting his parenting under scrutiny and in light of his outspokenness about Dwayne wade's transgender daughter he's opened himself up to criticism about his actions as a father unsurprisingly boosie's comments haven't gone over well on social media these were some of the best responses that we found people can't handle Dwayne and gabrielle allowing their child to live out bold but are completely fine with boosie's stupid getting grown women to molest his underage kids I'm surprised no one is threatening to call CPS on Boosie. Because y'all couldn't wait to call for the mom who was playing on the pole with her daughter. Boosie is on IG defending his decision to strip his 13-year-old child of agency, forcing him into a sexual act with an adult. And a bunch of dudes are co-signing. Some of y'all don't deserve children. And your parenting rights and access should be revoked. Boosie admitting to facilitating the molestation of preteens by an adult woman should be enough for his account to be deleted and banned at the very minimum. Y'all can't tell me this homophobic man is not sick. Talking about training his sons to be sexually abused. This is rape culture. Hell yeah, I got my son suck. 
This is 100% not okay. And if you don't see a problem with it, then you are part of the problem. Plus, I'm willing to bet most of the... So this man that's talking, this word homophobic, so this so this man that's talking, um, he must be getting his back blown out because I want to I want to dive into this. Like I said, this sounds like he sounds black. Whoever is narrating this sounds black. One first point I want to get to is that uh, we're supposed to be homophobic, right? According to the Bible. So I, I want to ask the guy who who covered this story of Boosie. First point is God homophobic? For no. Got three points. Well, two points for this topic about this whole homophobic thing. God encourages us to detest this lifestyle, right? God encourages us to detest this lifestyle. Is something wrong with God? Everything that I do is I do my best to align with God. Do I fall short? Oh, yeah, baby. I'm from North Sacramento. Sacramento, where you at? My second home is New Orleans, and y'all think. Dallas is sweet out here in Dallas. Oh, Dallas is taking care of they been they wow. You understand what I'm saying? The land of the cowboys. You understand what I'm saying? I'm from the gutter. I know I understand what's going on. None of us are perfect. But for you to call out Boosie a homo is he said this homophobic man, he sound like a woman. Whoever this man who just covered this story on Hip Hop DX, y'all do some background, see what this man is uh into men because these laws were set by God. These laws were set by God. So it's God. So my first question is, was something wrong with God for making these laws? Was God wrong for making these laws? Because Romans, all throughout the Bible, a man should not lay with woman. A woman should not lay with uh, a man should not lay with another man. A woman should not lay with another woman. Women should not wear men's clothing. Men. Women shouldn't wear men's clothing. Men shouldn't wear women's clothing. Women shouldn't wear. <clears throat> men's clothing it is detestable to the god is <clears throat> it's detestable to god so <clears throat> it's unpleasing to god to see men dress like women <clears throat> one you look foolish and one there's something wrong with you right there's according to god it's not pleasing to god to see women dress like men or act like men it's not pleasing to god it's an abomination according to god so if god says homosexuality is an abomination why are you attacking people who align themselves with God? Always roll with God. Always roll with Christ. Always roll with the Holy Spirit. Because when you do that, you separate yourself from the world, the worldly views, and then God's view. And then you as an individual, you're up to free will to, you know, make your own assessment. But I noticed that now if he called Boosie a, a homophobe, called Boosie homophobic, but then go off on. Dwayne Wade for allowing his for pushing this ideologies for pushing this lifestyle on his son. Some say he's doing it for money for Disney, but for ever the reason, how come the guy that's just who just covered this Boosie story, how come he didn't go after Dwayne Wade? Because he's paid to he's all he's part of the system too. I find that funny how he didn't criticize Dwayne Wade, but he only criticized Boosie. Like I say, if he criticized both parents and like you suck for um, even if you're playing, you suck for even entertaining the thought of a grown woman, you know, doing these type of acts with your underage sons and nephews. In the same Dwayne way, you're also a piece of crap of a parent for lying to your son and not correcting your son. He's on a path of destruction and you just as sorry as Boosie. That's a different story. Now, he's he, if the guy covering the story, he jumping on everybody. You know, but to call Boosie homophobic, we have to ask you because the third point I want to make a lot of people that support the LGBTQ community are not gay. So my question is, does that make you a homophobe if you don't like men? You're not against you support the community, but you're not you don't see yourself being with a man because by definition, you are a homophobe. You don't want to be with a man. The idea of being with a man doesn't appeal to you. You would never be with a man. So does, does that make you homophobic? Uh, you don't want no part of that. You don't want no man going up in your butt or your mouth. Does that make you homophobic? Even though you support the LGBTQ uh, people's rights, you just for everybody loving one another. And this is a false world that these people are living in. Nobody's going to love everybody. This world is harsh. This world is cruel. 
you're going to have to have discipline. You're going to have to have discernment. You're going to have to have class. You're going to have to have the strength of God to do whatever you need to do. You're going to have to unlock the chambers in your mind to believe in yourself, not only believe in God, believe in yourself, believe in your capabilities, break the limitations that you have. If you're a healthy person, I know I know people are sick and you know we're humans and the human body is very fragile. I'm talking about people who are healthy, who are in the right mind, who don't have dementia or Alzheimer's, who are in the right mind, who have the right heart, everything's working, you're healthy, healthy, able bodies, right? Specifically is what I'm talking about. I'm not excluding people, but I understand people have complications they can't do. But even then, you still have to push yourself. Life is about, life is just hard. And this is why, well, I'm just a believer. I don't know how people get through life without God, but those of you trying to understand or what's going on, you're going to need all of these characteristics about yourself to get through life and fulfill your mission. Whatever mission God has for you, you know, you're going to need all these traits and qualities. Like I said, discipline, you're going to have to obey. You're going to have to fight your urges. We're surrounded by lust, temptation, lust for women, lust for money. You know, uh, idolizing people who we shouldn't be idolizing, uh, name it, murder, hatred, sorrow, depression. You're going to need God to get through all of these uh, things in life. Then there's the beautiful side of life. There's a beautiful side of life. So Boosie got some work to do, in my opinion, in my opinion. Would y'all like my opinion? Well, I mean, I'm giving y'all my opinion, but I'm, I, would y'all like, let me see. Would y'all like the grand finale? Would y'all like the grand finale? No. Of course you do. That's why your ass is here. In my opinion, Boosie got some work. Boosie has some serious uh, work ahead of him. Uh... He needs to get his baby mamas in line. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to have to get his baby mom, baby mamas in line. He's going to have to get himself together. He's going to have to get his sons together. I think his sons are okay, but his daughters are off the chain, you know, and he said it's coming from, and, I, and, and that's the first thing I recognize. That's his mama speaking. Uh, that is his, uh, his baby mama speaking through his daughters. We got to be careful who we lay with. Got to be careful. Like I said, I don't have any kids. I don't mean, I didn't hit it raw. Because, you know, we all like to hit it raw. We all like to hit it raw. We all nasty around here. We all, I don't know what it is about not wearing a condom. I guess that's what it was designed for. We're not designed to use condoms. We're designed to get married first because, you know, it feels so good. Just in case you have a baby, you got you got your wife knocked up. That's how it's supposed to go. Somebody that has your back, somebody that you plan a future with. And that's not to say if you marry, <clears throat> that's not to say that, Unplanned pregnancies happen in marriage. We didn't plan to have a kid, but in a way we did plan, right? Because we none of us using protection. We planned it, but we like here's what I mean. Even if you marry, neither one wants a kid at the moment, but we want the raw sex. Can we just keep it real around here? Can we just keep it real and funky and nasty? Because that's how we like it in the bedroom. It's real. That good funk, not that nasty funk, not that fishy funk. I'm talking about fresh out the shower and we work up to the funk, right? <laughs> Ah, we work up to the funk, that good funk. You right sweating, that good funk. So it's best to get knocked up by your wife. I mean, it's good to knock up your wife. And for you ladies, it's good to be knocked up by your husband. It's good to be knocked up by your husband. And even then, say you guys didn't plan for it. You guys really didn't want to have a child, but you guys are married and you guys have been together four, five, ten years. You guys gonna work it out. And the baby does change everything. You can't have the your life before your married life before the child. It was so fun. Freaky sex. You guys can go to the club when you want. You guys can move when you want, travel when you want. Now the baby's here. It changes everything. It changes everything. You really get to see if this woman is the ideal mother. You really get to see if this man is the ideal father. Boosie has a lot of work with his daughters. You know, I hope not just Boosie family because he's a celebrity. Everybody's family. That's why I say us, us, the whole segment. I was talking about us. Music lovers, everyday folk, engineers, doctor. We all got to put in that work. And then you begin to see how beautiful you are as a person. You begin to see how beautiful this world is. You begin to see how beautiful God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit is because it's real. Once you put in that work and you pray and you just, whatever you need to pray for, whatever you're going through, you got to put God first and 
families are special. We're, this country, like I said in the beginning, this country is not really big on families. It's not really big on healthy families. So it's up to us to make it happen. In order to be great, we got to make great decisions. But music lovers, music lovers, let me know. What do y'all think about Boosie and all of this we just covered? Do you think Boosie has a chance to redeem a healthy relationship with his daughters and any of his and any other of his kids that he may have problems with? Do you think Boosie can rekindle the respect and love in his household? Do y'all think so? I think he can. I think anything is possible, but it has to be a uh, certain things that have to fall into place. Certain things that have to fall into place. It starts with God first. It starts with stop acting so goddamn ignorant. It starts with uh, bringing some understanding and having a foundation. So y'all let me know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. 250 capital G, Rooted in Music TV. I'm gone. Um.